Welcome to Mission to Inspire, where we share life experiences in our careers, personal lives, society, culture, religion, finance, family, and much more. Meet your host, Shola Ajabadi, as she takes you on a ride to fuel your inspiration. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola, and I've got a wonderful guest here with us today. <laughs> His name is Tony, Tony Rumbles. Hi, Tony. How are you? Hello, thank you for having me on. I'm having a slow morning. Are you? Where are you now, Dallas? If I am I right? I'm in Houston, Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. I don't know why I think everybody's in Dallas, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. <laughs> it's not far from here though. Mm. Four hour drive. How many hours? An hour? About four. Oh, about four hours. Okay. Right. So Tony is our guest today. And um, he's a very special guest. So he's going to talk to us about life experiences and his journey. But before we start, I'm going to ask him a few questions about himself related to what we're going to be discussing today. So first question. And it's going to be around things that you like or don't like. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. podcast or television, which one do you like to listen to most or watch? Oh, podcast for sure. I listen to way more podcasts than TV that I watch. Right. Okay. Well, that's not surprising because you're a podcaster yourself anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. True. Very true. Right. Okay. We'll take that. Live experience or reality life experience life experience is definitely gonna be the way to go because now you can kind of you can pick right reality just happens to you. <laughs> you you have no choice but the life experiences you can choose well i want to go to the beach here or i want to go to an amusement park or i want to travel yeah. so yeah there you go okay right okay we'll take that next question Teaching or singing? I know you like birds, so which one would you choose? <laughs> mm. Well, I'm a teacher by nature, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm always teaching. But man, singing just takes me to a different place. <sighs> I couldn't have life with either one, but... If I wasn't teaching, I don't know what I would be doing to pay the bill. So I'll go with teaching. <laughs> Not your passion. Teaching is my passion for sure. Okay. One of them. All right. Okay. 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 We'll buy that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, next question then. Home or abroad? Say that again. Home. Or abroad? Mm, abroad. Your home abroad, now? For sure. Home is the same. Abroad is, it can be different every time. There's no limit to the places that you can go. True. And the experiences that you can have and the people that you can meet. Mm. So for me, abroad. Abroad, okay. Okay. I think I like abroad too, but I'm more at home. I'm at home every day. <laughs> Last question. Evangelist or teacher? Mm, I think when you teach, you have an opportunity to evangelize. <laughs> so I think I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit here and say, and say teacher again. Teaching. Okay. So that's where your passion lies anyway. So you choose that. Absolutely. Great. Okay. So Tony is a teacher. So we know that now from the questions anyway, that he's a teacher and he loves teaching. Um, but previously before now, he had worked in oil and gas, customer service, banking, food and beverages. He also likes singing and teaches in church. Um, so, but now he's, he likes teaching. I think that is his passion, 
But today he's going to talk to us about his journey and choosing a career path because he has been through a lot. He has seen it all, but he decided to settle for teaching. So Tony, I'm going to leave the floor for you. You're going to do a little bit intro about yourself, please. Well, mm. <laughs> it's always, uh, where do I start? Uh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. So mm -hmm. that is a 20, that's probably a, a two and a half hour flight from Houston. So all of the stuff back here is all Detroit stuff and then stuff that I like. So uh, these are things that tell my story. So I have a picture up here with my wife and my son. There mm. we go, right up here. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without them. Oh. Um, there are other things like like sports. I have a football helmet and a, a softball uh, because I grew up playing a lot of sports, basketball, football. And that has led me to be able to coach sports now at the mm -hmm. school that I work at, which is another way that I'm able to teach and make an impact on people. So <clears throat> I do like watching TV. So I got uh, some Star Wars. I got The Office up here, uh, the American version, uh, <laughs> because uh, those things also help to connect people as well. And that's a big part of what I like to do is I like to connect in any way that you can do that, whether it's a TV show, whether it's sports, whether it's food, I feel like those things are the things that we bond over in life. And once you start to make those connections, the possibilities are endless. So uh, these things back here uh, represent me in various ways. Uh, so um, grew up with divorced parents. So we were back and forth, always moving and that's probably why I would prefer to live abroad. I'm used to moving around. You know? oh. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that had a big impact on how I see life and how I create relationships. You know, I was always the new kid in school. So it was always time to make new friends. So I think that is also part of why I like to podcast, right? I have my own show, the Living Numbers podcast, where I interview people much like you do. And so all of these different areas of life have shaped me to be the person that I am today hmm. and it has brought me to this show. <laughs> You're welcome on our show. We are very honored to have you. But before we dive straight in, I know you have a podcast that you do. Hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about your podcast? What's it about? I mean, and where can we listen to it? So my podcast is called The Living Numbers Podcast okay. because I interview people and I kind of walk through these different parts of their life, but I will assign it a number. So for example, I will go see like six years old. That could be a number. And I would talk about my life as a six-year-old and then maybe their life as a six-year-old because they had this different experience. Maybe they uh, went on a mission trip and it changed things for them. Maybe they uh, were involved in, you know, some kind of a car accident. Maybe they discovered their compassion at that age, you know? So I just kind of talk to these very, very interesting people who have had experiences that you can't make up. It's like a Hollywood script, you know, when you, when you talk to people and they're like, well, um, I did this and then I moved abroad and I did this and then I started my own company and did this and I lost it all. And then I wrote a book about it and then I gained it all again, you know? Wow. So that's what I like to do. Yeah. I like to find interesting people and mm -hmm. I like to help tell their stories. So uh, that's one thing that's consistent. There's always going to be a person on my show mm -hmm. that's going to have a great story to tell. And then through it, I tell some of my stories as well. Uh, so that's what the Living Numbers podcast is about. The Living? The Living Numbers podcast. Living Numbers Podcast. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so everyone, we know what this podcast is all about and how to listen to it. So how do we listen? Is it um on what platforms can we get? Spotify. Okay. Apple, YouTube, uh -huh. Google. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Great. All right. So we kind of do almost the same thing. <laughs> We like yeah. to tell people stories and learn from their experiences and share the experiences with other people in the world. So that is yes. great. So 
you've traveled far and wide. <laughs> Um, yes. And you've worked in different and lucrative sectors like the oil and gas, customer service, banking, you know, you, you name it. So what actually inspired you to choose teaching over all these other career paths? <laughs> well, at my church, we're going through this training called Unique. Mm -hmm. And it helps to look back at your life and your experiences and figure out what you're passionate about and what you're gifted at. Okay. So as I went through this course, it's like six weeks, we would do it every Sunday. So you could literally do this in a week if you wanted to just sit down with people and do it every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that and I just kind of realized I was always the person training people. I was always the person teaching people, bringing people along at all of these different jobs, all of these different steps. I remember in oil and gas, I was the person uh, that would help uh, train people on like OSHA certifications. Okay. Uh, when I was a banker, I would train all the new tellers. When I was in retail, I would train all the new cashiers. So part of who I am has always been a teacher, you know, a connector. So when I looked at it that way, uh, and I also taught abroad, I taught English in China for a year. And once I got back, I said, okay, let's Let's try to go down this education path. And I had a friend, my good friend, Carlos Jones, who's also been on my show, who's also my pastor. And we also graduated from the same school. He was like, uh, you should try teaching, man. I, he was a teacher. So I said, okay, let's check it out. So I was a substitute for a little bit. Well, not a little bit, about a year and a half mm -hmm. as I was going through my certification training. And I loved it. High school kids being able to teach that next generation of those people that are about to graduate, about to go to college or about to go into the workforce. Hopefully one of those, hopefully you're not just sitting on the couch at home, <laughs> uh, being able to impact those people really touched my heart, you know? So that's why I went into education and I've been a teacher for six years. Wow. Six years and you mm -hmm. are loving it. I'm sure it's great. It's great. You get to, I mean, the, the conversations that we have in class, I mean, it could go from, you know, basketball to uh, my life and my trials. I'm very open with my kids and I like to share those stories to be able to connect with them. Cause once you're able to connect, then you're able to evangelize, like you see it. Uh, and of course I'm not in there waving my Bible around, but I try to teach the same lessons that come from the Bible and hopefully they can connect the two at some point uh, because I'm not um, shy about my faith either, you know, but I don't let it, um, you know, get in the way or take away from what I'm trying to do in the classroom. So if people believe in other things, I like to just ask questions and try to get to know about those things and get to know the person. So in my room, it, none of these things divide us. I invite them because that's what makes us who we are, you know? Mm. So what you believe in is pretty much going to direct your life and how you, how you treat people and how you treat yourself and how you choose your occupation. You know, the things that you believe in are, are very important to us. So why would I, why would I push that aside, you know, for myself or for anybody else? So teaching allows me to be able to have these different conversations and help uh, these young people see things differently because it's very easy to get disconnected you know the older you get and you're teaching people who are in their their, their teenage years which are very formative a lot of times very uh, rebellious you know so as I'm getting older you know teaching now at I'll be 34 in nine days uh is different than teaching when I was 30 even that short time is very different and with all the things that have gone on in our world uh you know things are changing. So being able to stay connected to the youth and give back and to train them up uh, brings joy to my heart and purpose to my life. Oh, that is so true. Um, when something brings purpose to our life. Your first teaching career was in China. Mm -hmm. Why China? It was the easiest place to get into. <laughs> I had just graduated college. 
I didn't have any formal classroom teaching experience. And I was looking for what was next. You know, I didn't, I made up my mind that I didn't want to stay in banking. You know, that wasn't the next 10 years for me or however long this might be. So you go to a, a job fair, you look around and this lady goes, well, you could teach English abroad. You could go to China. And my first thought was, ain't nobody going to know China. No <laughs> way. But after speaking with different people and talking to these different companies, I get in my car and I'm sitting at my steering wheel and I just think, what about this China thing? Could that work? Like, it sounds ridiculous. And this was 2015. And I, I just, it didn't make any sense to me. But after talking to all these people, I'm like, whoa, why not? You know, let's let's do our research at least and kind of see if this is a viable option. And clearly it was viable because uh, not even a year later, my wife and I, we were in China, you know, didn't need any experience, just a degree. So that's how I ended up in China teaching, you know, four or five, six year olds all the way up to I think maybe 11 or 12 middle school age kids were the oldest ones that I taught while I was there. It was a lot of fun. Wow. So uh, how would you encourage those that want to do the same? Would you encourage anyone to go to China? I would say find a place that you want to go to, maybe okay. do your research. Um, China was great for me, but it may not be for everyone. There's a huge learning curve, right? Because the the, the, the language is totally different, right? Now we're talking about a huge shift in culture. So if you're not ready for something like that, it may be, I would say it may be too much for some people, but I do think there's a place that anyone can go, right? Just as long as you do your research and try to find that place for you. I would say teaching abroad is definitely an eye-opening experience, especially if you never left your own country. Being able to go abroad and see that there's another way of life, there's a different way that people live and people learn and people experience, you know, family and, and food and fun. So I would definitely suggest uh, going abroad teaching because it's also a way to make money. So you're not just traveling and spending money and going on vacation, which is great, mm -hmm. but you know, you can make money and, and, and work and have these different experiences with other people. Oh, that's very true. That's very true. So what about those in the same situation as yourself or then they were in the same situation and um, they want to teach or they want to change a career or choose an ideal career path, but they're finding it hard. Mm -hmm. What will be, what will be your advice for those kind of people? I would say you should look back over your life and see what are the things that you're passionate about mm -hmm. and the things that you end up doing just by nature. Right. Because those are the things that is going to make us the most successful. Yeah. Right. If you're always in front of the camera, if you're always, you know, playing dress up, if you're always doing things like that, it may lead you into acting path. You know, if you're always been the person that would take things apart and put them back together, if you're always the person that likes to try to figure things out, you may need to be looked down engineering. Right. Because even looking through engineering, there's way there's so many different kinds. Right. There's the structural there's a computer engineers, right? There's all these different kinds of paths. So I would say, look back at the things that you like to do and the things that come easy to you because those are gonna be the areas that are gonna be the most successful. Because if it comes easy to me, right? I can automatically kind of just do it. Now just think of if I start to actually train myself in different areas in that thing that's natural to me, now the sky is the limit, right? I'll be able to do whatever I wanna do in that area. So. I would say, what's your passion? And then what comes easy to you? And then number three is going to be make a plan, right? Because a lot of people would just go, well, I want to be an actor. I'm going to quit my job and move out to, you know, California or wherever. And they, that may not be feasible all the time, right? Some people can, some people do. But sometimes you need to go, all right, I'm going to take this amount of time and work towards this for the next six months and then see where I am. And then after that, 
I'm going to look at the next six months or the next year. So you want to make these milestones. You want to set goals, which sometimes the goal is, you know, let's just come up with a podcast name. And then the goal might be, well, let's just start recording some stuff by myself. And then you go, okay, well, let me just start talking to other people, right? So ironically, at the end of the unique training, they say you have to set a a 10-week goal. So for me, I said, okay, the next 10 weeks, I want to create 10 episodes for my podcast. And at this point, I think, did I have a mic? I don't know. I don't don't think I had much equipment. I had a laptop. Maybe I had a mic and and an idea. But the goal was set. And so I think out of that 10 weeks, I think I got eight episodes. So it just gets the wheels turning. It gets you moving. So passion, what are you naturally good at? And then create a plan. That's true. Your passion what you're naturally good at and then set a plan. Wow, that is powerful. That's powerful, but that is very true. Thank you so much. So if you look back though, um, do you have any regrets with your choice? Uh, I do have regrets. I think anybody who says they don't, either they were very lucky (laughs) because things just kind of bent their way Mm -hmm. or maybe they had a lot of money so they could just do whatever they wanted but anyone who's had to make difficult decisions yeah you're not always going to make the right choice it's just impossible so I think that regret comes uh, it's, it's a part of life but I don't think that regret has to define you or it has to drag you down mm-hmm. you know but it's just part of the journey so I would say the biggest regret that I have yeah. and I was talking to my dad yesterday and they, they kind of intertwined so I'll tell the story so in high school I started in Detroit mm-hmm. ninth grade year I played I played football American football and I played the whole year I was pretty good and then I moved to Texas with my dad and my stepmom and all of my siblings, uh, 10th grade year. So sophomore year of high school, no school. <laughs> so I play football again. I don't get to play the entire season because of like rules and moving. So to make that part short, I didn't get to play much, but I played a little bit and I was good when I played. So the next year, my dad says, okay, we're moving to another area, but it's going to be a better school. So my junior year, 11th grade year, I don't get to play football at all. So that kind of season was taken away from me. Yes. So this out of my control, not my regret yet, but it's a part of the story. Okay. (laughs) So senior year, I play football, doesn't really go my way, doesn't work well. Uh, But a coach basically said, you can play at the university here. You're that good. Like you you have the talent. So that always stuck with me. So after working in oil and gas for a little bit and doing some other things, I go, okay, it's time to go back to school. Let's go to the university that coach said I could play at because I still want to play football. I never really got like this real chance to see how far I can go with it. So I go to the University of Houston and I go for the tryouts. And you have to have all of this paperwork in from each high school that you went to. And so for me, I go, okay, two high schools are in Texas. One is in Michigan. That's 2,400 miles away. I don't know how to get that paperwork. And so I called the school where they said, oh, we don't have it because it's been so long since you've been here. And I didn't know how to get it. So I just gave up. I never played football. I never even tried out at the collegiate level because of this uh, like paperwork issue. And I didn't know how to solve it. And I didn't even call my parents to try because, you know, at that point, my parents weren't much help, honestly. So I just kind of gave up my my dream of playing football or at least trying to see if I could cut it. You know, at least you want the opportunity. So I think that's one of my biggest regrets because that's one of the things that I felt like I didn't get a chance to really do. Most other things, I feel like I gave it a try. Either I was good or I wasn't. I liked it or I didn't. But that's the one thing I feel like, man, I 
I just never got my hands around the situation and mm -hmm. try as much as I could. Ah, uh, okay. Would you play American football again now? You think you would go back to it? No, I'm too old. <laughs> 34. No, I'm not going back to college to play football. Or I have a family now. No, it, it just doesn't fit anymore. Okay. Okay, would you encourage your son? You have a son? Mm hmm Okay, would you encourage He's him? almost two play? years old. I would encourage him to do what he loves to do. Ah, uh, yeah. So because I'm a coach and I, I I play athletically now, I play basketball and softball. Not much American football. I don't want to be tackled, right? I have a job to go to every morning. <laughs> I don't want people hitting me. <laughs> Uh, but okay. I want my son to be able to explore whatever his passion is. So if that's music or if that's sports or if that's painting yards, if that's singing or acting, I want him to be able to do those things because I think it's important to be able to explore those paths. Um, I know you teach public speaking in a conventional school. Why mm -hmm. public speaking? Well, public speaking is, uh, well, it's not just public speaking. So it's, okay. it's really a, a communications class. Right. So I teach about interpersonal communications, working in teams, uh, being a leader, how you communicate with your team from that uh, aspect, from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, how to put a presentation together. So all of the stuff before the part where you get up and speak in front of people, I teach all of those things too. So I teach, you know, the PowerPoint kind of thing as well. Uh, visual aids, no visual aids, uh, how to uh, command your space, you know, depending on how much space you have, body language, all of those things count. And they all happen through practice and preparation. That is the only way that you can be as good as you can be right now. Some people naturally are good at speaking and communicating with others but for those people you just try to fine tune you know and fix the little things yeah. that they could do better and then um, others they don't want to speak in front of people ever at all for any reason so for those people the the win is is different you know if you could just get them up there to say a few things that's great progress and you know so you start from there and you work your way forward. So uh, public speaking, communication, leadership, I kind of roll it all into one. Right, interesting. So you teach in the, in the church as well. Is it the same? Uh, well, when I taught at church, it was more about Bible study. Ah. So yes, teaching the Bible. I can teach just about anything. Once I know the material, I'll be able to teach it to others in the way that they'll be able to understand it plainly. So, yeah, I got my first start teaching at church, you know, just teaching the scripture. And everything is English related. That was where you started anyway. Yeah, always. So once you start, well, for me, once I started teaching, uh, I just knew that it was my passion. It's what I am gifted to do. I do it well. So everything that I do now is just always about teaching. How can I learn something and then teach it to other people? Oh, great. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you for coming on our show. Have you got any inspirational advice for our listeners, our viewers out there that might want to do what you're doing? I would say find your passion. Uh, and the only way you do that is by trying different things. You have to, you know, read and, and take action and learn. And once you find it, once you find that thing that you're special at, because we're all special at something, mm -hmm. I would say hone that skill, work at it, become an expert in that area. And I think success will come to you. And of course, uh, for me, you know, it's always put God first in everything that that I do. So that's the way I would, uh, that's what I would suggest for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'll say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you so much for coming on our show. We've really enjoyed your story, your journey, your advice, and your inspirational tips that you've given us on this show. Thank you so much. And until next time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Mission to Inspire. Subscribe if you have not already done so. Like, comment, leave a message. Let's stay connected. Let's jointly inspire the world.